Hello, I'm Jennifer Lee Levitz, and this is Unleash the Power of Age. As usual, I have a special guest, and he'll be introduced in a moment. Um, well, I'll say his name, but you can't see him yet. David Bergeron is a partner in Beauport Hearing with his wife, Judy. Judy. His wife, Judy, of course. We all know Judy. <laughs> um, and they are participating with us at the Senior Center in the second annual Brain Fitness Fair and Rally. Uh, David, do you want to start telling us about the rally? First, let's Say hello. Hello, hello David. Hello. <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you for having me, Jennifer. Of course, David. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. No yes. worries about you talking. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, this, this is the second time we're doing the fair. The first one was a huge success. Yes. Uh, the fair, let's start with the dates this year. Okay. The, well, it's, during, it's June 11th uh, from 9 to 11. Um, at what? the Rose Baker Senior Center. Okay, and what day of the week? Oh, that's a Tuesday morning. Okay. And um, we're doing it during the month of June because June is Alzheimer's Awareness Month. Okay. Uh, so it's the time when we think about things related to brain health and cognition. Okay. And aging. Okay. Not just aging, but just brain health in general. Okay. Uh, so we thought June was a good time to do this. It is. I'm going to stop right now and say that this is not just about Alzheimer's. This is about having a healthy brain to hopefully forestall, prevent, lighten any dementia that someone may develop at whatever stage of their life. So this um, information and the fitness fair and rally are not just for seniors, they're for, well, everybody's going to be a senior someday, God willing. And uh, it's the kind of information that can be helpful in any age, in any walk of life. Okay, let's yeah, go back to... Yeah, research is telling us that there are things that we can do starting in early life right. and midlife uh, to help us have a healthier brain as, and to age more healthy. Uh, and um, there are five areas where you, you can work in or think about. Food and nutrition is the first area. Okay. Um, we, food, we should think about food as medicine. Uh, it, it's the first medicine, right? And uh, so we want to eat healthy. So we're going to have programs and activities available that day for people to participate in on that day and going forward. It won't be just that day. There's going right. to be some fun things that people can be introduced to that day. And if they're interested, they can, they can follow those. So there'll be activities in food and nutrition. Uh, well, the second area that we're talking about is movement and exercise. Uh, extremely important to keep moving, get out of the house. You know, that, uh, the phrase move it or lose it means yeah. so much more than we always thought. Yes, it keeps us moving well, but it also keeps the brain. Yeah, we, we used to talk about cardiovascular health and the right. importance, you know, to avoid heart attacks, right, and strokes by staying active. But we now know that there's a lot more than that. Sure. Uh, so everything about our health is, is reliant on our ability, our continuing to stay active. Okay. And moving. Moving. Just moving the body. It doesn't have to be rigorous. It can be just a walk every day, a nice walk. It can be swimming. It could be whatever it is. Right. Um, the next area is cognitive activities. Now, what does that mean? That means we want to keep learning new things. No matter how old we get, we want to keep our curiosity vibrant and and uh, learn to play games, read interesting books and talk about them, learn a new language maybe, or learn a new skill, whatever it is. Yeah, it, it, okay, you know what I'm getting, uh, one of the things I'm getting, I'm gonna keep bringing it back to this, David. Everything that you can start in kindergarten. These are the, these are the ways we learn our entire life. There's no reason to stop over the age of anything. The same you can learn how, as you said, you can learn a language, you can learn a skill, you can read a book, you can do anything that you've started in your earliest life to keep going as long as you live. That's right. 
and keep active in learning and reading. And then the fourth area that we're, we're talking about is social activities, social engagement, mm. the fun stuff, right? And uh, a lot of the things that we do related with food and movement and learning new things, those are also social. They have social aspects exactly. to them. Exactly. Uh, but we, but socialization and social activities is one of those domains that the research is telling us is really important. And I know from my personal experience, all right, I, I have two parents, unfortunately, they're still alive, fortunately, but unfortunately, they have Alzheimer's, and um, it's quite, it's quite difficult. Um, and is it, uh, is it diff just difficult for you? Is it difficult for them too? I, it's difficult for everyone and it's very confusing. But um, I've noticed when we're able to get them from their living at, at assisted living, but if we're able to get them and bring them home to a family event and have a, a, a nice social activity with them. Now, if I visit them, it's very good. For example, I'll go to the home and ask them about lunch right after we ate. They can't remember if we had lunch. But we take a visit and we spend time with family. They'll talk about the visit for a month. Right. They'll remember everything about it. Isn't they'll remember who was there. They'll remember what was talked about. And it spills over into other things. It seems to help memory in general. So, you know, those social interactions, especially with the family and friends, but just, you know, just get out of the house and stay engaged. It's if it's to go down to the senior center and stick, sit in the lobby and read a newspaper and say hello to a few people while you're there, that's something. Right. I think you know, that it, that whole aspect it, of social engagement is one of the, I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but I'm going to anyway. There's a movement which is not, not, bad per se, but it's becoming um, pervasive. Nothing wrong with keeping people in their own homes. I'm all for it. But if all they do is stay in their own home <clears throat> and are totally socially isolated, don't see anybody, don't go out, have one person come in maybe once a day, maybe every other day to help them out where they need it, but other than that, they don't go anywhere, they don't see anything, they don't do anything. That can't be right. It's, it's so important to be interactive with other people. It's almost, you know, I might even put that first. Well, the research suggests that it is first. It is. That, that uh, you know, you can talk about food, you can talk about movement, you can talk about learning new things, but you got to socialize. It, and that is the thing that is, it, it's the golden thing. It is. Uh, I, it's the know, golden thread. You mentioned your parents. I just visited my sister who is in assisted living. She doesn't have Alzheimer's, but she does have a form of cognitive, <clears throat> some people would call it dementia, it may or may not be. It may just be resulting from stroke. But I, we see the difference when we can't. She's on the West Coast, and we just can't get there. And However, when we do, boy, the change is immediate. Yeah. And um, from the eight days I spent with her, from the difference from when I got there to when I left was remarkable. Yes. Uh, and all it was, was being with her and having her move a little. So that's one of the numbers, Yeah. the moving. So we're going to have lots of activities. The last area that we're talking about as a, as a domain, we call them lifestyle domains. That's great. And that is uh, thinking about strategies to manage our stress. And so that we can get a good night's sleep. Managing stress and getting a good night's sleep is that last domain. It's really important. And there's lots of things we can do to manage stress. You know, that sounds to me like one of the ones that really is important way before senior years. Way before senior years. Yeah. It's also Keep about managing pain. Pain. You know, and how we manage pain. Um, doesn't have to be with, you know, heavy-duty pharmaceuticals. No. You know, what we eat, the teas that we drink, 
you know, and the things that we think about and that we choose to spend our time thinking about and doing, these things all have a much bigger influence on our overall health and particularly our brain wellness right. um, than we knew previously. Right. So it's, it's fun to realize that, you know, formal medicine, as miraculous as it, the outcomes are from formal medicine, it's not really what we're, is going to help us when it comes to preventing Alzheimer's no. or dementias. So you're not trying to cure anything. Right. You're, just, you're just doing things that we know from research have reduced the occurrence of disease. And people are avoiding things like cancer, heart disease, strokes, um, skin problems, uh, arthritic symptoms, you know, and memory and cogn cognitive uh, symptoms as well are being improved by just living a nice, old-fashioned, socially engaged, healthy food, stay exercise, you know, stay exercising, things like that. Okay, so we're calling this a Brain Fitness Fair and Rally. What does that mean? So we're going to start the event. We've got a whole bunch of activities and programs at the fair. Uh, some of them are senior, most, most of the activities are available on a regular basis right at the Senior Center. At Rose Baker, yes. Right at the Rose Baker Senior Center and I'll tell you, if, pe if you haven't been to the Rose Baker Senior Center, you need to check it out. It's a great Senior Center and I think it's one of the best. It is one of uh, the best. You know, because I, I travel around and I visit different ones and they're all great. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're, they're all really great, but there just seems to be a lot going on. There's at, at too Rose much Baker. going on. Sometimes, there isn't even yeah, room for yeah. everything that's going on. So, uh, and so the activities that we've got in the programs, and then there'll be some outside ones, especially in the food and nutrition area, uh, because in the food and nutrition, you know, the recommendation is eat organic. Don't eat processed foods. Eat whole foods that are not processed, and it can get pricey. So. Um, What's the best strategy? You know, the advice is do the best you can. The more of the protocol you do, the better your result. But it's really hard to do the whole protocol. But this is why the programs are going to be there. So with the food and nutrition, there'll be a, a dietitian, certified dietitian on hand, and they'll be offering some training that you can sign up to learn about, okay, where do I get healthy, nutritious food? How can I cook it? You know, how can I stay within, a, within my budget? That's, that's really important. So we'll have these activities. And then during the rally, we'll go through the domains. For example, we'll say, okay, on food and nutrition, we have over here, we have the open door, we have backyard growers, and they have activities. And you can go and talk to the representatives. We'll introduce the representative at the rally, but just kind of highlight what that organization is offering that relates to okay, the Okay, David, there's also going to be a snack table with healthy snaps. Uh-huh. And that will be something that I'm in charge of. I yeah. can't wait. So we'll be offering some snacks. We'll have a couple of recipes. And um, I'm sorry, there won't be any pretzels. There won't be any chips. There won't be any of those kinds of things. But there'll be yummy alternatives. Well, there's going to be lots of yummy alternatives. I'm excited about this because Everybody likes to watch a movie or their favorite TV show or spend time with family with snack food, right? So snack food is an important part of a lot of people's lives. Really? And healthy snack food is what we're going to be modeling right. at, this, at this. And it's delicious, it's affordable, and it's available. Right. You just, we just want people to know about it. So this is one of the things that we're offering this year. This is a new dimension this year that that, that we're bringing in, into the fair. Mm -hmm. Last year we had snacks, but we didn't think so much about making sure it was all healthy. This time it's all, all healthy. healthy. So um, the rally will highlight that. We'll have movement programs, we'll have yoga, we've got Tai Chi, uh, we've got exercise classes, we've got aqua fitness. There's a, there's a lot of a lot of activities that There's are available. We'll activity. highlight those. Some of them are lower impact. Some of them are more, you know, more rigorous physically. But there's something for everybody, right? If you're, if you want to just sit in your chair and do movement, 
you know, with your arms and legs. I mean, there's, there's something for everybody. Not to mention, um, just the activity of coming to the fair is activity. Just coming to visit any weekday at Rose Baker is moving. It's activity. That's right. So, and the cognitive area, yes. learning new things. Yes. We have so many uh, clubs that meet there. They play Scrabble, they play pool. They play bridge, they play cribbage, they play bingo, 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 <laughs> bingo. bingo, bingo. Yeah, yeah, ping pong. Uh, but um, so, and, and then there'll be other programs where you can, you know, book clubs and things that you, you, you can. We're um, going to have get. some brain puzzles, brain teasers and physical little puzzles for people. Dexterity is, is so important. I mean, even if it's only to be able to open your medicine bottle. <laughs> yeah, you want to keep using you those fingers. You want to use those fingers. Speaking of which, there's knitting, crocheting, um, those kinds of activities are very important. They're extremely social as well. The art room, okay? It's uh, with Junie. With Junie, right? there's, so it's, it's the. There's always something going on. There's, it is the, they make the little dolls and they, yeah, there are a lot of people, you know, there are a lot of people who say, I always wanted to do art and I never had time in my life. And they come to Rose Baker and they go upstairs and they meet Junie and they become artists. They become the artists they always wanted to be. It's uh, miraculous what she's able to do. It's a terrific group too. And it's another place in the building where it's social. And there's a memoir group. A memoir group. Right. Uh, people will help you to write your story. And, th th you know, there's therapy in writing your story. It's therapeutic <laughs> um, to be able to do that. Yes, I is. like to write. I'll just write just to write sometimes because it's calming. Yes. Um, so we have a writing program. Yes. So. Um, There's a singing program. Right. And singing is good for your hearing too. Ah. If you sing in choir, uh, you, you are able to hear uh, noise. Uh, you can understand speech and noise more easily if you're used to singing in choir. Wow, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, it's a, it's, you're practicing listening. You have to listen. You, you have, have to learn to listen, to listen. Um, and it's it's a good skill. It is. That reminds um, me of acting. You know, we don't have any acting yet. I'm trying to work on that. I want to see a show there, and there's music, uh, right. at least two Mondays a month, right. with the old Salty Jazz Band. Right, it's Monday afternoon, and you, and uh, dancing if you like. So get the foot, feet moving. I don't know where can you go for live music. It's and there's live music often at Rose Baker. There is. I mean, they don't play recorded music. This live music. That's true. <laughs> That's true. So, so, I mean, I, I love going for that. Right. And you we could, will be introducing people to these programs. And are we having some kind of a sign-up thing? Or what, how is that working this year? Well, uh, You'll be able to go around. We'll we'll feature all the programs during the rally, and okay. then during the fair, you'll be able to talk to the representatives that are there about what the activities. Ask your questions, and the ones that interest you, you can sign up for. Okay. Uh, and then come back for those. Um, prizes. So, and we will have prizes. We're going to have two kinds of prize. We got a door prizes. Okay. For anybody that comes when yes. they when they arrive, you'll check in. Uh, we're asking everybody to, 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 to give us their name and phone number, all right? And uh, you'll get a prize ticket or, or a raffle ticket right at the door. And then at the end of the fair or during the fair, we might have a few raffles. We had a lot of prizes last time. I hope we can have a, a lot of prizes again. But so we'll have door prizes that day. Uh, but we're also offering something different this year. Okay. We're offering a grand prize. It's not going to be given out that morning. The grand prize is going to be given out on August 2nd, or the, the prize winner will be selected on August 2nd. 
And anyone that attends the fair yes. and signs up for a program yes. and comes back to that program, every time they return, they will be entered for a chance to win the grand prize. So you have to actually so, go. You have to go to the activities. You don't have to be present to win on August 2nd. No. But you got to go back after the fair well, that's a to, some, idea. to some of the uh, programs. That's a good way, you know? And the more you participate, the more chances you'll have to win the grand right. prize. So at least you so. give it a shot. If you don't like it, you don't have to keep up with it. If yeah. you do like it, good. But what, whichever way that works, you get an entry into the grand prize. All right, I like that. Yeah. Good. So naturally, uh, we are very grateful to the committee that's working on this oh, and, and is very excited about this. Lucy Sheehan is the director and, and dear Lucy. Um, um, very enthusiastic about this program, as are all the members of the committee. We got Mike Feeney, Ann Freeman, Lydia Bertolino, you, Jennifer, I'm on the uh, and Leanne Kennedy. And David uh, Bergeron. And, <laughs> and David Bergeron, yeah. <laughs> And I'm very grateful for the excitement and the enthusiasm. And of course, of Sheila, as always, we can't do anything there without Sheila. That's right. <laughs> All right, so that's the committee. Um, was there anything we left out? I, I, I just want to re-emphasize that this is not just for seniors. There are some parts of it that will be most uh, beneficial for seniors, coming back and doing the programs, etc. But this information is for any age person. So if you are someone with a, um, an older parent and you want to be able to help them, it's good information. If you are an older person yourself, it's good information. If you are someone with children and you want to know what to do to help make sure that they grow up with the best chance of having a full functioning brain, this could be for you. If you are a young person, we're working on it. It's a terrible time of year for this, but we're hoping to have some high school kids be part of the event that day. Um, maybe at the game table, maybe at the food table. It's nice. It's one of the aspects, intergenerational contact. It's good for everybody. It's important. It's something that we're going to work on we are. as time uh, passes right. <clears throat> to create more intergenerational opportunities. Sure. Uh, it's it's come up in in research as something that's important to be done. Right, um, I yeah. know that when I, I have to, I'll say this one more time. Visiting my sister in the assisted living, I learned so much. It was uh, a great way for it was a great visit for us. It was very educational for myself. I appreciate. I'm appreciating my own good health. And uh, I want to make sure more than ever that I keep it. It's important. If nothing else, it's so that I can be there for her. Yeah. And uh, so hearing plays a role in all of this. Of course. And, and <laughs> I, I, I have to underscore that. Of course you do. Uh, you know, in all of these activities and domains, whether it's enjoying food together and the preparation of food, I love cooking with family. It's right. one of my favorite things to do. Right. But whether it's food and cooking with family or movement and exercise, uh, whether you're trying to learn things and play games with people, whether it's social engagement or managing stress, our hearing is so important and it's something that we take for granted. Mm. And the Lancet Commission for uh, prevention of Alzheimer's, um, brought together world experts on you know what do we know about brain health and Alzheimer's prevention and cure. Uh, there is no cure, of course, but someday we hope. The cure is prevention, really. Uh, that's, that's probably the cure. And what they said, one of the most important things we should do in midlife, not later in life, but in midlife, is to monitor our hearing and address any hearing uh, issues that we have because there, there's a higher risk of uh, de dementia and Alzheimer's, up to five times greater risk with an untreated Whoa. hearing loss. Yes, yeah. And in our clinic, we, you know, we talk about symptoms. We have patients come and they're having trouble hearing, but they're also having trouble remembering things and, and 
you know, participating in, uh, in conversation. And what families report to us and what we observe is that once the hearing is, is addressed, some of these other issues are lessened, they're improved. Right. So those, those symptoms, memory loss, short-term memory, for example, improves when you can hear better. That's right. You're not spending your mental energy trying to figure out what somebody is saying. Mm -hmm. You're spending your mental energy on remembering what they are saying. That's right, David. So uh, it, you know, it's it's an important thing, and we we need to underscore it because it's that invisible invisible disability, right? We don't see it, so we don't think it's important, but it is very important. Okay, right. one more time. It's the bra second annual Brain Fitness Fair and Rally on Tuesday, June eleventh, from nine a.m to 11 11.30 a.m. Yep. And then there will, of course, be soup and salad afterwards if people want to stay. Right. You know, the soup and salad bar, as I say often, is open to anybody in the city, any age, any affiliation. Anybody in town can come in between 11.30 and 12.30, Monday, when, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and soon to be Friday, and have soup and salad, free. Of course, that's in conjunction with the Open Door and Senior Care, but it's at the Rose Baker Senior Center. And the day of the Brain Fitness Fair and Rally, you know, when we started this thing, I couldn't say that. <laughs> but now I can say the Brain Fitness Fair and Rally on June 11th from 11, uh, no, from nine. nine to 11.30. To 11.30. Games, prizes, food, and fun. There you go. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. I'll Glad see you here. at the next committee meeting. Yes. And Thank I you. will see everybody um, here. Thank you.